Our series of more perfect union aims and I would say succeeds in showing us that what unites us as Americans is far greater than what divides us. In the city of brotherly love, you don't have to visit an art museum to see beautiful paintings. There's an innovative program in Philadelphia using art to transform public spaces. And as our Errol Barnett shows, it's also changing lives. So right here was where you would sleep each night. Right here. For five years, Michael Bello often used this bench in Philadelphia's suburban station as his bed. So how does it feel now to walk through here on your way to your job? It's, it, feels, it feels amazing, you know. Sometimes that's why I gotta, I gotta remind myself, you know, just come sit right there, you know, to, just to be grateful, be thankful that you're in a situation you're with now. Bellow's job is steps away in this cafe-turned-workshop. It's home to Color Me Back, an initiative of Mural Arts Philadelphia, helping Bellow and others face and overcome life's hardships one brushstroke at a time. There's a lot of people that come to this program, you know, you know, they look at me like, you know, Bellow, you know, he was homeless, you know, he got himself together. They see me, they like, you know, he, you know, Bellow, you know, he can do it. He's a, he's a role model that makes a lot of people, you know, want to change their life around. Those experiencing economic and housing insecurity are offered the chance to create murals and public art, earning $50 for each morning's work. Thank you for your work today, sir. Yep. Connecting people in need with useful social services and beautifying Philly along the way. Art is a lifeline, that it opens other doors. Jane Golden grew Mural Arts Philadelphia into what is now the nation's largest public art organization. How did the program get its name? It was in our early classes, and the participants came up with the idea that it would be called Color Me Back. It's because people really feel that they're brought back to life through the art. Oh, we're going to crack open the sealer. OK. Right now, Arlene Williams is experiencing her own revival thanks to Bellow's outreach. I stayed in the parkway when they had the uh, encampments in the parkway. What did Bellow say to you? Um, every day he came and it was like, I just want to encourage someone to get off the street. And I guess I was the best candidate. So he was saying it to everybody, yes. but it really resonated with you. Why is that? Because this just being on the street wasn't the place for me. I wanted it better for myself. And having places like this, it was a stepping stone. They give you so many chances here. It's, it's just a, a place of love and a place of being. And what else have you gotten out of this access? Um, I sustained housing for seven months now. I completed school, so it's, this is this is this is everything that I needed. So far, the program's paid out more than one hundred fifty thousand dollars to nearly six hundred fifty participants. Because we're surrounded by the names of all the people who've come through this program and have been impacted by it. What is this moment like for you to see those names? You know, it's very humbling actually. We have a scarcity model in our society. We think, well, we can't afford it. We can't do that. That's never going to happen. But suddenly, when you make an investment in the human spirit and in human potential, this is what we see, this kind of potential, and that it leads to other things. And that is how the world changes. Proving that sometimes the most transformative art is a blank canvas. For CBS This Morning, Errol Barnett, Philadelphia. It seems like such a basic idea to now have all those names on the wall of people they've helped. It's incredible. I like what she says. Art is a lifeline and it opens other doors. Yeah. Very true. Basic idea, but beautiful one. Mm -hmm. Really so.